Hello, 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 dear friends, and welcome back to my channel. I am certified life coach, Talia Sage, here to combine my natural gifts of intuition with the science of life coaching to bring you guidance and tools that you can use to create your best life possible. Today's video message is going to be the keys to your manifestation. We're going to just get some insight into what you can do, what you may need to change in order to bring in your manifestation that much quicker for yourself. And we will also get some timing to try to figure out when this manifestation may be coming in for you. Before we get into this message, please take a moment to like this video and subscribe to the channel. It lets YouTube know that you like what you see and that you want to see more of it. And it helps me to accomplish my mission, which is to reach and help as many people as possible live their best lives. It is our God-given birthright to live peaceful, happy, abundant existences. And my mission, my sole purpose in being here is to help offer that support, that guidance that will help guide you to creating your best life. I am a certified life coach. So if you would like some one-on-one -on -one help um, in overcoming any obstacles, any limiting beliefs that you may have and getting closer to creating your best life, feel free to find my website listed in the description box. I would love to help you. All right, as I said, today's video message is going to be the keys to your manifestation. As you can see, I already have some pile selectors out. I did shuffle for them, so they will be included in your message, but we have group one, group two, and group three. Group one, you have the law of eternality. Live like you're dying. Group two, you have the law of manifestation. Let go of trying to control life and allow miracles. Group three, you have the law of second theory causation. Stop reacting and start being the person you've always desired to be. As usual, use your discernment, your intuition to decide which group or multiple groups are calling out to you. You may even be drawn to all three and that's okay. If you are drawn to more than one, it just means that you have multiple messages sprinkled throughout multiple different groups. This is a general reading, so take what resonates with you and leave the rest for someone else. Not everything in each pile may resonate with you. And if it doesn't, that just means that that message is not for you. And if you would like to schedule a pers more personal reading, you can also find that information listed at my website in the description box below. If you need more time to decide, pause the video here while you make up your mind. Otherwise, when you are ready, you can find your timestamps posted in the description box Click on your timestamp and you'll be fast forwarded to your messages. I'll see you there. Hello, group one. If you chose this law of eternality, I think that's how I'm supposed to say it. This will be your message about the keys to your manifestation. Live like you are dying. So I will read the book on this. This is a new deck to me. I just received it yesterday for my birthday. Um, but I wanted to just channel some messages that I'm getting first off. Right away, I'm being drawn to these doves. I feel like the message that I heard was peace be still. There's some things within your energy. Maybe they are thought patterns. Maybe they are limiting beliefs. They could have to do with things that have happened to you in the past, but it's like your energy is not at peace. You are not at peace. Uh, you may have some perfectionism. You may have be a bit of a workaholic or just always be on the go doing things 
not necessarily because you want to do them, but because you feel like you have to do them, like you have to keep pushing forward. You can't sit still, you know, you might have some people pleasing qualities where you are constantly saying yes when you really want to say no. You're being called to allow yourself to be still, to be at peace, to find peace within your current circumstances and to work with them to the best of your ability. I feel like there's things that you want to do, but you just, you don't do it for whatever reason, whether it's because you tell yourself you don't have the time, your finances aren't in order, um, other people, things need to be taken care of first, whatever it is. It's like there's always something more important and more pressing than living your life for yourself. I just also saw the message in my mind's eye of, um, oh, now I just kind of lost it. What was that spirit? It was a really quick flash. My legs are also tangling. It's just this really on the go move, but it's like you're spinning your wheels. You keep moving, but you're, it's like you're still stuck. You might feel stuck in life right now. You might feel like this manifestation that you are questioning about has been stuck, like there's been no progress being made. And you may feel like you're working so hard towards it, but you're just not getting anywhere. Like I'm seeing someone stuck in mud or feeling like they're in quicksand. You're being called to live your life according to what would make you happy, according to what brings you joy, brings you happiness, um, puts you at peace. I'm really being drawn to that country song, Live Like You Are Dying. That might be a song that you resonate with. It might be a song that you want to look up, but it's basically about choosing to live your life for you and knowing that this is your one chance around the sun. I mean, many of us may believe in reincarnation, but still you only get one opportunity in this body, in this vessel of yours. So live life with that knowing. What would you do if you knew that you were going to die tomorrow or next week? Would you, I don't know, say no to going in for that extra shift and spend time with your family and friends? Would you not be so stringent about exercising and how you appear to other people? Oh, that was that message before. Um, it's almost like you're overly concerned about what other people think of you. And you're being called to release those that judgment. It's like you judge yourself. It's like other people don't even need to judge you because you are always judging yourself. And these could have to do with um, things that happen in childhood that you may not even be aware of. It's going to be different for all of you. So apply it to your situation as it fits. And if you would like some help in unlocking this, once again, reach out to me at my website. It's like that judgment of yourself keeps holding you back from fully living your life to its fullest. Going out and experiencing the things that you want to experience not putting yourself out there for fear of other people judging you, for fear of ridicule, for fear of failing. I feel like there's a strong message here to not be afraid of failing, to not be afraid of looking like a fool. Live life like you're dying. Be wild and free like these doves. All right, let's read the book. The Law of Etern Eternality. Okay.
page 61. Hmm. The fact that this is on page 61, this is telling me that there are some blockages when it comes to your sense of unconditional love. Feeling that unconditional love from the universe and maybe people and things around you, but also having that unconditional love for yourself. And part of bringing in this manifestation that you're looking to bring in, you need to begin, oh, my legs are tingling off the charts. You need to begin a new phase in which you unconditionally love yourself for all your flaws, all your quirkiness, everything that makes you unique. Because if you're not able to own those things, then you'll never be able to live life for yourself. You will always be controlled by other people's perceptions, judgments, ideas. It's time to really step into loving yourself in all of your glory, in all of your magnificent colors and beauty. All right, the book says, your true essence has no beginning or end because you are because who you are is the ceaseless creative source. There is no space or time in the spiritual realm. There is only one life, one mind, and one spirit. Healing and heaven are in the present moment. This immutable, unchangeable aspect of you is the part of you that is eternal. You are immortal. You may be experiencing anxiety or regret. Upon drawing this card, your higher self desires for you to awaken to the eternal moment and stop living in the past or future. There is no space or time in the spiritual realm. There is only eternal healing in the present moment. As you let go of the limiting story of your past, you will begin to receive things of the heavenly realm. That's that judgment coming in. You might be someone who deals with panic attacks, anxiety, um just lots of fears you know it could be fears like public speaking or fears like traveling on your own or asking someone out on a first date or speaking up to an authority figure in your life it could even just be fears of the dark right fears of driving these internal blockages can manifest in many different ways in our life and one of the biggest ways, like we were just talking about, is anxiety, fears. And it's your body's way of trying to let you know that there's something deeper there that needs to be healed, that needs to be removed. So you're really being called to look at any of these things. Do you deal with anxiety, panic attacks? Do you have any fears around anything in your life? And you're also being called to really focus on the present moment. I think I said in the beginning that um, past situations uh, could have put some blockages around you. And you may be reliving those moments in your head over and over. You could be overanalyzing, overthinking, um, being concerned about what has happened in the past and using, allowing that to dictate your present moment and what you feel may happen for you in the future. It could also be causing, you could deal with depression as well. Um, and you could also be overthinking, overly concerned about what's going to happen in the future. Almost to the point of where you are so fear stricken about the future that it's like in this present moment, you don't know what to do. That's why you may feel like you're stuck in the mud or in quicksand. You're being called to really focus on the present moment, to open those gates to what lies before you now. Live like you are dying. What would you do in this moment if you knew that you would not have the time tomorrow to do it or next week or next year? 
I feel like that's a journal prompt for you, group one, and this is already going longer than I expected it to. Um, but ask yourself that question and write down the answers that come to your head. What would you do today if you knew that you wouldn't be here tomorrow? What would you do today if you knew you wouldn't be here next week or next year? All right, I've already drawn your oracle cards, so let's see what they have to say. Hope you can still see that. All right, you first have Never Ending Story, card 37. Then you have Time for a Nap, card 24. Your chakra cards are Facade with the Solar Plexus Chakra. Let's see, how do I want to do this? You received a lot of cards, a lot more than I was hoping to get. Isolation with the Throat Chakra. Bittersweet with the Throat Chakra as well. And you have Tree, Let Them Go, card 18. I would like to point out that this 24 here reduces to another six, just like this card was on page 61. This is really about finding that unconditional love for yourself, loving yourself for and through your past mistakes, past heartaches, uh, loving yourself through finding acceptance, I feel like, within yourself, of understanding that you can't, you can't, well, we do it all the time, right? But not to beat yourself up today for what you did not know then right? We all have things that we've done in our past um, that we regret, things that we wish we could have done differently, words that we wish we would have said in that moment, um, ways in which we would have wished that we would have stood up for ourselves for something, right? But we can't change the past. All we can do is learn from it and use that to our advantage in this present moment to create the future that we want, which is your manifestation. You're being called to let it go. We have 18 reducing to a nine, and this 37 reducing to a 10. This is all about, oops, let's move this out of the way a bit. Letting go of the things that are not serving your best and highest good. The fears, the anger, resentment, bitterness, um, depression that has been holding you back, that has been controlling every aspect of your life and what you do and the choices that you make. <clears throat> it's like you're in this never ending story this cycle that you won't let end it's like your thoughts just keep running back to the past they keep running back to the past and trying to sprint ahead to the future trying to predict what comes next because your ego because there has been pain in your past it has come up to try to protect you but at this point, is holding you back more than it is protecting you. And I feel like you're being called, if you're not already, you're going to be going through some sort of ego deaths soon. This video could even pop it off for you if you haven't stepped into it yet, of dissolving those, burning away those parts of yourself that need to be released. Excuse me, I am, um, my nasal is getting like really clogged. Okay, 
feeling like this is like a symbol for you right now. Like you are very, <coughs> excuse me, clogged up. You're very clogged. It has to do with your throat chakra. It has to do with maybe even crying a lot about things that have happened in your life. You know, like when you cry and you get the drippy nose and then it like becomes like a clogged stuffy nose and your throat hurts and all of that. I feel like that energy has surrounded you a lot. And it's been hard for you to step away from these past experiences because it's almost like this reminds me a bit of myself. I went through a lot of heavy crap early on in life from the moment I was born, you know, till like early 30s even. Um, and from a young age, from elementary, high school, uh, you know, going off to college, I always had this outlook of expect the worst and you'll never be taken off guard you know always expect the worst because then it won't seem so difficult and this might be an energy that you've been in or that you are in now or have been in in the past of just always expecting the worst you know expecting that the future will look the same as your past and trying to find out, trying to figure out how to control it now so that those same things don't repeat themselves. And when you're putting out that energy, the universe is going to send you those things that you're focusing on. So if you're expecting the worst, that's what it's going to bring to you. You're being called to, once again, take a time out with this time for a nap, put an end to the story, put an end to this narrative of scarcity, of lack, of fear. Acknowledge. Acknowledge the painful things that have happened in your life, the lessons, all of that. Oh, we also have another dove here, but also find peace in them, right? For every, like there's a silver lining to everything, as people like to say, right? There's a lesson to everything. There's beauty that can be found within every scenario, situation. No matter how painful it was, you can turn it into something that was bittersweet. While, yes, this lesson sucked of trusting this person. That was the bitter part. But the sweetness in it is that now I know what to look out for. I know to stand up for myself in this situation, to not be so trusting, to not give so much of myself, whatever it is, apply it to your life as it fits. But there are some things, you know, with the sours come the sweets, there's duality to everything. And I feel like that's part of the message for you is to find that duality within your past occurrences so that you can finally find acceptance within it. I feel like you've built up some walls around yourself with this facade and this isolation. You've maybe even isolated yourself a bit. Um, you might have some fears around, you know, being in really public places or places with a lot of people. You could have some auditory, um, sensory type things when you get into loud environments, when there's a lot of people, things like that. And, oh, and I'm getting the chills in my arms now. This stems back from things in your past. They could be things that you are completely aware of or things that are hidden, but you're being called to find them, to bring your awareness to them. Because once you're able to understand where these walls come from, why you, I don't know, pretend to be a badass when you're really a big softy underneath, why you, um, this is my thing, right? I was always a loud mouth. Like, always was a badass like always like 
being like, you wanna go, you wanna go? No one damn well I like, couldn't fight and didn't wanna fight, but it was like, I built this wall around myself where I would like try to scare people off before they could try to come in and hurt me. And that could be you. You could even have a different way of being. You know, you might be more quiet and reserved when you're really a very talkative, communicative person. It's going to be different for all of you. But in some way, you have built walls around yourself and isolated yourself from allowing people to see the real version of you. And it's time to let that all go, to release it, to burn that down. As you do this, you're going to find more power within yourself, within your solar plexus chakra, right? You'll feel more confident in yourself, confident enough to go out and be your real self, to let your authenticity shine through. Like this is your manifestation completely has to do with your authenticity, being yourself. Being able to speak up for yourself, being able to have your own original authentic thoughts and not follow a crowd because you feel that that is what is necessary. That's what's necessary to be accepted, to be liked, to have friends, to have a romantic partner, whatever it is. Live like you're dying. Life is too short not to be yourself. And I know that this is going to, your manifestation will come in. It's all about a matter of timing of when you decide to do this internal work. How quickly you choose to do it even. But we have the, eight, the nine and the ten here. That's the end of a phase, end of a cycle going into a new one. Just like I mentioned with this card 61. When you find that unconditional love within yourself and for yourself, that will be the beginning of a new phase of your life. You can get some tarot cards for any further information. We have the strength card. And I love, this is such a beautiful depiction of the strength. You're being called to find that strength within, right? To to be strong enough to let down your guard, to tear down those walls, to do that deep dive into the painful things of your past and really get to the root core of where things came from. Because I feel like on some level, you may think about the past a lot and it might make you angry, it might make you sad, it might bring up all these low vibrational emotions, but you don't fully get to the core of the issue. It's like you get stuck on those emotions because it's scary, right? It's scary really doing that deep dive and, you know, looking at past situations and asking yourself, what could I have done differently? What can I learn from this situation? It's a lot harder, rewind, it's a lot easier to stay in anger than it is to find acceptance and forgiveness and move on. And I feel like that is really what it comes down to for your manifestation. Finding that forgiveness and acceptance of your past situations, learning from them, Right, You choosing to learn from them takes back your power, takes back your control. You've been giving your power away to these situations in some way, and it's going to be different for all of you. But you've been giving your power away, and you're being called to reclaim your power. And you do so by finding the lesson within it, giving gratitude for the lesson that you were taught, and then taking that lesson and turning it into your future blessing by doing something in this present moment to make it work out in your favor. 
Also, there's a message here with this isolation. If you are someone who's a bit of a workaholic, who's go, 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 who's always doing something, you're being called, oh, and take a nap as well, to take a pause, to really sit in your energy, to sit in these memories, to really give yourself the time to evaluate why you act this way, why you do these things that you do that you really don't want to do. Because it's going to be so enlightening, so eye-opening for you. And once you really, once again, get to that core of the issue, that's going to begin that next step, that next phase in your life to where you can really bring in this manifestation that you are seeking. Your bottom of the deck energy is the Knight of Voices. Once again, more throat energy. You're being called to live your truth, to speak your truth, to own your truth, to go after your truth. Stop living life for other people. Stop living life based on what you think people want from you. Stop living life based on allowing fears to control you and hold you back. It's time to start living for you. You are this Pegasus here, right? You're not like all the other horses on the ground. You have wings and you were born to fly. Excuse me, this congestion here. You have wings and you were born to fly. Don't allow past experiences to keep you small. All right, we're going to finish off. I bet this is going really long. Yep, it is. Anyway, we're going to finish off with one final message from Spirit Buttercup. When I see Buttercup, I always think, cheer up, Buttercup. That is your message from the universe. Be ready. The best is on its way. Cheer up, Buttercup. Absolutely. You have not seen anything yet, Group 1. The best is on its way. And it's going to come in quicker than you realize. Once you set yourself on this path of healing yourself, finding forgiveness and acceptance, and learning to love yourself because you are incredibly lovable. All right, I'm going to finish off with some dice to get some timing. <laughs> okay, that. Two fives. First off, 55 here. This is the number of change. Once you really begin to step towards this manifestation, expect a lot of change to happen. It could seem very chaotic, very tumultuous. Don't take that as a sign that things are not going your way. Because now that you've taken the necessary steps, spirit is going to do everything in its power to rearrange things in your favor. Don't allow fear to tell you otherwise. Don't allow fear to tell you that things are not going your way, okay? Also, these five, <laughs> five plus five is 10, the end of a cycle going into a new one. I'm getting five weeks to five months Yes, five weeks to five months is when you can start to see this manifestation take shape for you if you do the work. If you would like help doing that work, please, once again, reach out to me. You can find my information on my website listed below. If this resonated with you, Group One, please like this video and subscribe to the channel. I've greatly appreciated you sharing your energy with me. If you would like to help support the channel even more, you can find an Amazon wish list as well as a donation link listed in the description box below. It is never expected, but any donations are always greatly appreciated. I will see you very soon. Goodbye.
Hello, group two. If you chose this Law of Manifestation card, these will be the keys to your manifestation. Let go of trying to control life and allow miracles. So right away, I'm feeling some control issues. <laughs> group two. So I don't know if you can see this, but I'm seeing these diamonds here behind these roses. And when I see diamonds, it always makes me think of Brianna, shine bright like a diamond, right? But on top of that, I'm getting this sense of not fully believing in yourself, not fully believing that maybe on some level that you deserve this manifestation, that you can make it happen for yourself, maybe some self-worth issues some confidence, self-esteem. It's like you don't see your own beauty and sparkle. And you don't see how radiant you are on some level. And so you try to control things, right? These control issues could have to do from things that happened in your past, things that went wrong that put you in this energy of always wanting to be 10 steps ahead, right? Always wanting to know what comes next, always needing the answers, because at some point in your life, you felt helpless. You felt like you had no answers. You felt like your life was controlled by others or outside forces, right? And so you've, to protect yourself, your ego put you into this energy of needing to control things, needing to control yourself, every step you make, right? Being very methodical, needing to control the people in your life. Um, you know, this could have, let's say like in your past, you could have had a parent who was very controlling. You had to look a certain way, act a certain way, speak a certain way, or else you were not you did not feel accepted. You did not feel loved, right? You, uh, There could be some perfectionism that a parent could have had that has now been passed on to you. Um, but it's, you know, it could even be this thing of still, like to this day, where you have to look a certain way or speak a certain way or act a certain way in order to feel as though people will accept you or people will respond to you well. You know, just really trying to control how other people view you, how other people think of you. There could be some, you know, control around, you could be that friend, right? Who can never just go with the flow, who just always has to have everything all planned out, all mapped out. You could have had your whole life mapped out already, right? It could have been like, I'm going to go to college, get my degree, uh, find a good job, get married by the time I'm 26, start having babies by the time I'm 28, be done having babies by the time I'm 32, and you know, have your whole life planned out. And it probably hasn't happened the way that you want it to. You may be finding within your life that things haven't been happening as you would like them to. That is because the universe is trying to get you to see that you are perfect the way you are. You don't need to try to change or control anything about yourself in order to obtain this manifestation that you want. Like you're being too rigid in some area of your life. And spirit, the, the universe is really calling for you to not be so rigid. What is that? I think it's a parable. That might not be right. Um, but it's basically talks about like money. If you're trying to manifest money, if you clench on too tightly to the money that you have, it can never flow out, right? But also being so tightly clenched you're not able to allow anything in. 
But if you open yourself up, open that hand up, maybe spending a little bit here and there, still being practical, then you allow money to flow in and flow out. There's some sort of imbalance in your life in some area, group two, that the universe is trying to call your attention to. Maybe you are too controlling with your money. You know, maybe you're not open enough to allowing yourself to find enjoyment and have fun. Maybe you are not spontaneous enough in life, allowing for spontaneous events and things to happen. It's going to be different for all of you, so apply it to your situation as it fits. And if you would like some help in discovering more about this within yourself, feel free to reach out to me. My website is in the description box below. You're not allowing the spontaneous nature of the universe of miracles to take, take shape in your life. Because in your mind, everything has to go exactly the way that you have planned it. When the universe is trying to say, uh-uh, the way that you think it needs to go is not what's actually going to bring you the most happiness that you seek. What The way that you think that things has to go is not actually going to lead you to where you want to go. And it's like you keep trying to redirect the universe, micromanage the universe, and that's not working. Relinquish your control by finding the beauty within yourself, by knowing that you are enough just as you are. You don't always have to have your hair completely done and your makeup, you know, on point before you leave the house. Ooh, okay, I'm being drawn to this message. So. I was very much this person. My makeup was always done, my hair was always done. I was always always making sure that I dressed very well and, you know, really cared about what other people thought of me. Really wanted to make sure that I could control that narrative that I was seen as someone I don't know, who was beautiful, who really cared about themselves and blah blah blah. But <laughs> that wasn't really me at my core. I'm very much a natural person. Do I like getting done up sometimes? Heck yes. For a special occasion, I will go all out and I love it. I enjoy it. But that's not who I am on a regular basis. And it took many years for me to find that out. And it had to do with past things of past things from childhood, honestly, where, you know, I was taught to be a certain way, come off a certain way. I was taught to control situations because there were, were many situations where life was out of control and I had no say in it, no hand in it. I was a child. But the first real lesson for me in learning and allowing myself to be myself and accept myself as I am, flaws and all, not giving any Fs about what other people had to think about me, right? If someone's going to judge me because my makeup isn't done, that's on them. They're superficial. <laughs> but my first lesson of really learning this was when I met my husband. I was not looking to meet anyone when I met him. I was actually at the point where I was like, F it, I'm done. I'm just going to be a player. I'm just going to do me, you know, because I had had a long string of just not compatible people. <laughs> and when I met him, my hair was not done. My makeup was not done. I was wearing my baggiest, holiest pants, um, just a t-shirt, some tennis shoes, just really not in that mindset. Like I was going out to buy a car, that was my purpose, that's all I was doing. And then I met him and I actually bought my car through him. Um, and it was like he saw me, for me. 
he talked with me, he flirted with me. I felt like he was very engaging in the conversation. And that was the first time in my life where I felt like I wasn't just completely judged based on my appearance. And even so, he actually prefers that over me being all made up. Love it about him. Because people I dated before were very superficial because I was also superficial. And what happens is like, we ended up speaking again after that moment and I asked him out and the rest is history. But still, I never would have expected that I would meet a long-term partner in that manner. I would have thought that I would have had to be all made up, you know, dressed to the nines, hair curled, all of that. And it happened when I least expected it. And when I was, when I completely just allowed myself to be me, to be my natural beauty. And some of you could be looking for love. Some of you may not be, but that is the overall message for you is to just be you. You don't have to control things. You don't have to control how other people see you, what other people think of you. What other people think of you is none of your business. And if people are judging you because your makeup isn't done, because you're not dressed a certain way, that says more about them than it does about you. All right. <laughs> All done with being preachy. Let's move on here. Your Oracle cards, you have deep knowing, card 43 in reverse. Your chakra card is gossip with the heart chakra. And then you have feast, slow down and celebrate yourself, card 29. Before we get into these, I forgot to read this. I got off on that tangent. I apologize for that. <laughs> Group one had tangents as well. Must be the energy today. Card seven. First off, the fact that this is on page seven, it's telling me this is all, this has to do about your spirituality, about your emotional growth, maturity, development. And in finding that emotional growth within yourself, it will lead to a deeper understanding of yourself spiritually and may even bring in some spiritual gifts that you are yet to discover about yourself. Like being able to manifest, being that master manifester, because I believe at your core, you are a master manifester but you haven't been able to tap into it yet because you've been dulling, dimming, blocking your own authentic beauty. All right, it says, there are two primary principles of this law. Spirit, your higher self, creates from nothing and in harmony with the unity of life. Through your beliefs within your subconscious mind and soul, you set into motion this universal law. The degree to which your beliefs are limited and not in accordance with the harmony with life is the degree to which you will experience yourself unable to manifest. Ooh, let's read that again. The degree to which your beliefs are limited and not in accordance with the harmony with life is the degree to which you will experience yourself unable to manifest. Furthermore, Serving the highest good exponentially increases your ability to manifest. Let go and stop trying to force things to happen. By drawing this card, your higher self desires for you to be open to how things show up in your life. By controlling and outlining the universe cannot deliver your dreams. Remember, spirit, your higher self creates from nothing. So you must release the preconceived ways you think things have to happen. However, if you create in harmony with the unity of life and in service for the highest good, your ability to manifest will, ex will increase exponentially.
release that control. How you're trying to control your surroundings, the narrative of your life, how people perceive you perhaps, is going to be different for all of you. So I feel like you're really being called to take a pause and to look at those things. Because you could be someone who's already achieved a lot in life. You could have really overcome some obstacles in life. You know, you could have made it through college, found a decent job. You may even be married, have a family. But on some level, it's like you're still not allowing yourself to enjoy the fruits of your labor, to really sit back and enjoy where you've come from and where you are now. It's like you may have gotten pretty far in life, but you're still not happy with that. And you're going to continue, I hate to say, to not be happy with it because you, that energy that you've been in is slowing your manifestations. Yes, they come to you over time for some of you, which should be proof to you that you are a, a great manifester. What the universe is trying to let you know with this message is that you could be a master manifester if you would just get out of your own way. Four, five, six. Oh my goodness, this 43 here reduces to a seven as well. Angel number, master number 77. Once again, master. You are Master Manifester Group 2. And the universe is trying to help you step into that. This Deep Knowing card says, You are an empathy overload and need to get grounded again, so tune out for a bit. Hypersensitive, you're suffering from psychic exhaustion. This signals a time for a recharging of your batteries. Once again, slow down, right? Set energetic boundaries, take a salt bath, empty your mind, and get back to you. Yes, it's not a time to be too open. Soon enough, you can let your guard down. Right now, you need self-care and self-love. It's time to say no thank you to anyone in your life who exhausts you. Won't that feel good? Hmm. It's like you have this deep knowing within yourself that there are people, situations, things within your life that are not serving your highest good, but because of appearances, because of wanting to control how people view you or see you or say what they say about you even, it's like you allow this low vibe energy to stay around you and it's blocking your manifestations. It's blocking you from reaching your full potential. There could be some gossipy people around you. You could be a gossipy person. If you are, you're being called to knock that out. That is putting a blockage on you. Gossip is one of the lowest vibrational energies out there. Once again, what other people think of you is none of your business. And you also should not care about what other people are doing because what they're doing is only their business. You're being called to only focus on you. And if there are people around you who are gossipy, who always want to say something to you about someone else, that energy is bringing you down as well. It drains you. I feel like there could be some energy vampires in your life. Um, there could even be like some circumstances, could be a job, could be um, what's the word that I've been looking for? I can't think of the word. It could be a job. It could be, um, things that you have agreed to do that are draining your energy. And, ooh, that's what it is. Saying yes when you really want to say no. 
like you keep going <laughs> you keep agreeing to do things uh be on the pta volunteer at this event help this friend with this thing and you're not leaving enough time for you due to trying to control or you might not realize that you're doing it this could be a very um unconscious thing that's hidden in your subconscious right of just wanting to control how people view you wanting con wanting to control that you know people see you as a good person whatever it is but it's you're overextending yourself is what this really comes down to you're overextending yourself there are inner things that are energetic energetically draining you and it's time to say no. It's time to slow down and celebrate yourself. Slow down and enjoy the fruits of your labor. Slow down and enjoy your life. We have 29 here, reducing to an 11. You have two master numbers showing up. You are a master manifester. The things that you want would come to you so much quicker if you learn to put up some boundaries, I feel like, and say no to the people, things, and situations that you know are draining your energy. I'm being drawn, once again, to these fruits. Like, this could be you having a hard time saying no to those chips or to that cake when you sh should be picking up a piece of fruit because it's going to be more easily digested by your system. Right? It's going to give you the energy that you need to keep going. It could be as simple as that. It's going to be different for all of you. So really apply it to your situation as it fits. But I'm really overall getting this energy of like, your heart is blocked. Your heart chakra is blocked. Because it's almost like you want to control the narrative that other people have towards you, about you. And once again, if someone, or not once again, but if someone is going to judge you because you don't want to help them move, right? After you just worked a 45 hour work week, that's on them. They're probably not that great of a friend, right? Your tarot cards, you have justice. Eight of voices. And the knight of materials. Underneath the deck, you have the Ace of Voices. <laughs> I just heard that song, um, Rise Up by Audra Day. They're being called to rise up, to bring in some balance into your world, into your life, by speaking up for yourself, placing those boundaries, standing up for yourself, and freeing yourself from the prison that you have created within your own life. Either based on some deep-seated things from your past, some limiting beliefs, based on the entanglements that you get yourself into because you have a hard time saying no, or because you want to really try to control that narrative of how people view you, how people speak about you, whatever it is. You're being called to find those boundaries speak up for yourself to live your truth to live for you when it really comes down to it right your energy is the most important thing when it comes to your manifestation if you are too drained the universe is not going to deliver it to you because it's not going to feel that you are ready which is why this manifestation has yet to come in for you but if you have make the time if you are well rested, if your body is taken care of by eating those healthy foods, right? Making the time to eat healthy, whatever it is. Then the universe, that's going to signal to the universe that, hey, they're ready. Let's bring this on in, right? Yeah. 
we have this night of materials here, not even the page. Like you, you are a rather stable person. I feel like very practical. Once again, very methodical, like I said in the beginning. But you're just missing this one piece of the puzzle, which is placing those boundaries and reserving your energy for yourself. Because there's this is a long road ahead of you. I feel like the manifestations that you're seeking, they're not just like a one and done thing. It's like a legacy, an ongoing thing. And you're gonna need the stamina to get through it, to maintain it, to keep it going. Once again, this also makes me feel like you have acquired some level of success within your life. You've overcome some things within your life already. I'm being drawn to the succulent here. You know, succulents, they don't need much to thrive. And I feel like that's you as well. Like. The universe is telling you that you don't need much more in order to thrive, in order to bring in this manifestation. You know, succulents, just a little bit of water, like once a month, will get them through. You're like, I'm seeing the image of a camel where they, you know, they keep the water and the humps on their back. Like you have reserves. You're just being called to build up your reserves a bit more and to maintain them. Because that's what is going to sustain you in creating this manifestation in, within your life, in holding on to that manifestation, keeping it going. What are you trying to manifest? <laughs> the moon. Okay, well, spirit doesn't want to tell me. But we have the pink moon here. The pink moon is happening in April. I believe the beginning of April. Oh. I think this video will not come out until after the pink moon. But look up when the pink moon happened and look back to what was going on during that time because something is being illuminated to you during that pink moon time. You might realize it in the moment. This video might be that little nudge that gets you to slow down and really look back at what was happening but something is going to be illuminated to you during the beginning of April. So really keep an eye out for that. Either way, you've, you're in a prison of your own design, of your own making. And once you bring your life back into balance, placing those boundaries, cutting out energy vampires, whether that's people, um, things that, commitments even, you will be able to free yourself and move towards the physical, tangible proof of your manifestation. Let's get one final card out for you, group two. You are so spiritually attuned. I feel like part of what's happening is that you are just so burnt out that you're not fully being able to tap into your intuition. And that is why you're being called to release some energy vampires, some things that are draining you out of your life so that you can finally have the energy that you need to tap into your intuition and really make this manifestation come in for you. And I know that that is on point because my whole body started to tingle. You're about to begin a new phase of your life where you're able to slow down and enjoy yourself more. Where it won't feel like you have to work so hard to bring this thing into your life. All right, your card is Magnolia. 
You will find what you need in the wisdom of your heritage. I feel like what this is partly saying for you is that... Huh. Okay, it's taking me back to what I said in the beginning. Like, perfectionism, control issues. These are things that I feel like are generational for you. And if you really take the time to look back in time, look at yourself, maybe look at your parent, their parents, and to see the cycle, that is when you will be able to break this cycle and free yourself from this bondage. All right, let's get some timing out for you to see when this may be happening for you. But remember, time is not linear. It's really going to be dependent upon you doing the necessary work to make this happen for yourself. We have three and six. This could take anywhere from three weeks to six months, depending on depending on you doing this work, right? If you would like to speed along the process and get some help in it, feel free to find my website in the description box below. I am a certified life coach. This is what I specialize in, helping people to get to the root of their problems and to transcend their own limitations. Group two, if this resonated with you, please like this video and subscribe to the channel. I appreciate you sharing your energy with me. If you would like to help support the channel even more, there is a donation link as well as an Amazon wish list listed in the description box below. I look forward to seeing you very soon. Goodbye. Hello, group three. If you chose this card, the law of secondary causation, these will be your messages about the keys to your manifestation. Stop reacting and start being the person you've always desired to be. All right. <sighs> okay. Group three, what I'm feeling You've been through some some ish in life, right? And I feel like this has made you sort of put your guards up, sort of made you build up a hard exterior, so to speak. Um, maybe always ready for a fight, always ready for that next shoe to drop, um, always ready to pounce. And This energy, however it manifests, shows itself within your life. It prevents you from seeing all the good that's around you, right? We have a rainbow here. We have, I mean, we have the palm trees. I feel like they're on a beach somewhere. There's sand there. Something in your life, I felt has taught you to always sort of be on guard, to always be on the lookout. And, you know, it's probably due to pain things, past things that have hurt you, past things that have gone wrong in your life, that have caught you off guard, and you're like, never again. I'm not ever going to let that happen to me again. I'm always going to be ready, right? And... I'm really getting like this fighter energy, boxer. Um, I don't know why. I was just, uh, oh, how does that sound go? I was just shown Christina Aguilera's fighter video in my head and it's been years and years since I saw it. Um, and I can't remember how the song goes, but that could be a song that you have liked or that you do like. It might be a song that you want to look up. I 
I feel like you have this desire though to be someone who is keep going back to this fighter reference of who can roll with the punches who can you know take the limits that they are given and make lemonade um you know who can have somebody speak out of turn to you or say something rude to you and not immediately go into fighter mode or not cry because it has affected you so much or to not cl clam up because you're so scared whatever it is um it's like you want to be someone who is cool calm and collected who can what is that saying um be the calm within the storm so to speak who is not afraid to speak up for themselves who isn't so easily scared by things that happen um where you can stay in your power i feel like i don't know what your manifestation is but that energy is what is required in order for you to bring in this manifestation that you seek Being someone who can see the rainbows through the storm, who can see the positive in things, who can This is very interesting. Let's read this card for you. The law of secondary causation. <clears throat> okay, where is it? It says, within every creation, there is a ripple effect of other creations. All material and corporeal objects have been, having been created by spirit with their own intrinsic potentialities are subsequently empowered to evolve independently in accordance with natural law. Each effect becomes the cause and creates more effects. This includes creating from a consciousness that is in a reactive state or form, or form an existing creation. It is time to stop creating from a consciousness that is, that is in a reactive state or from the past. You always have a choice to create something new. Doing your inner emotional trauma work will free you from repetitively projecting your BS belief systems onto every situation and person. You must learn to exhale between the stimulus of life and harness your responsibility. Huh, that's cute how they put that. Responsibility. Yes. Due to past events. Oh, okay. I just saw uh, PTSD flash before your, before my mind's eye. You could be someone who has PTSD. You could resonate with even having CPTSD, that's chronic PTSD. You could have grown up, or not even necessarily grown up, but just had experiences where they weren't just one-off experiences. It was like long-term things that were happening in your life. Let's say, could have been in poverty for a long time. You could have grown up in an abusive household or had an abusive partner, um, dealt with homelessness, um, just 
like I, they could have also been one-off things that were very traumatic, but I'm more so feeling for the majority of you that these were like long-term things that greatly affected you. And they continue to affect you because you're still in that state. I'm feeling like there needs to be a rewiring of your nervous system. You may be someone who, back to that fighter, yes, fight or flight. You could be in a state of constant flight or fight because of your past experiences and you may not even realize it. And I say this as someone who was in that constant state of fight or flight and did not realize it for a very long time. And I also feel like for myself, and this could be true for many of you, that this was learned behavior. This was generational things that had been passed down to us, right? From our parents, from their parents. Maybe from always being in poverty or being in poverty, out of poverty, in poverty, out of poverty. It could have been um, emotional, physical abuse that happened to us in childhood, but also happened to our parents in childhood and their parents. And, you know, it's been this cyclical cycle, this generational cycle that has taught you to be more reactive than proactive. And the way in which to bring in this manifestation for yourself is to learn how to be proactive instead of reactive. And I understand that that is not that that is more easily said than done because it has been something that I have been working on for years and I'm finally just now at the point where I feel that I'm able to be more reactive instead of proactive. Where I can take time to assess the situation before I react. Like I don't have to put on those boxing gloves right away. When I see someone reacting, not reacting, but like coming at me harshly. It doesn't affect me anymore. You know, in the past, people being angry with me, because I grew up in a abusive childhood, to me, that was immediately, okay, where can I go to get safe or what do I have to do to protect myself, right? And I feel like, I mean, this, that might not necessarily be what has happened in your life, but the energy is still the same, so apply it, you know? It could have been, you grew up in a household where you were told to be, or taught even, to be seen and not heard. So now you might have a hard time speaking up for yourself because you fear the repercussions of what will happen if you do, right? It's going to manifest differently for each of you, but really take some time and look at how you've been in fight or flight mode or how your responses to things don't seem normal. And I really say normal lightly because there really is no normal, but there's a normal that you're looking for. There's a normal that you need in order to bring in this manifestation that you seek. And I feel like part of this manifestation that you seek is just being able to look at life more positively, to have more of a positive experience when it comes to your life in general. To see more of that beauty in the world that other people maybe see, that you have yet to see. Let's see. I've already pulled your oracle cards, which you got a lot, so let's tap into this. Where should we start? You have no place like home, card 50. Hmm. Okay. There's way more. <laughs> then you have stars. You can manifest your every wish. Card five. Yep, that's what this whole message is about. Next, you have castle. It's time for healing, not war. Card 30. Back to that fighting energy. Then you have garden. Something lovely will grow from this. Card 15. Your first chakra energy is release in reverse. Then you have instinct, 
also in reverse. And then you have quest with the throat chakra. The keys to your manifestation, the advice for you to reach your manifestation is to go on a quest within. A quest of discovery of who you really are. Because there has been some past, I'm getting the chills, my heart chakra is lit up for you. There has been some past experiences and my crown chakra, holy cow. And which, ooh, okay. Rewind, my crown chakra is lit up because deep down, you know that there have been some things in your life that were not right. There have been feelings about people, about situations that in your heart, you know that they're not right. It could be the way that people treat you. It could be the way that you were raised, the way that your parents spoke to you, um, the way that an ex lover or friend treated you or reacted to you, whatever it is. You know that these things weren't right, but on some level, it's like you just had to accept them for what they were because you were afraid. You didn't have the power to stand up for yourself, to speak up for yourself. You could have been a child and just didn't know any better. But deep down, you knew that it didn't feel right, whatever it was. You're being called to go on an inner quest and to really discover more about yourself, about these things within your life. You, group three, chills again. First off, you are an earth angel, if you didn't know it. You have such a beautiful soul, a beautiful heart. You are meant to help lead and guide others, whether that is through your teaching, whether that is telling your story and helping people to learn from it, whether that is raising your children differently than you were raised. You're meant to be a beacon of light. And these painful things that you've experienced in your past, they were all a part of your journey. They were for a purpose, they were for a reason. And I feel like I'm hearing someone asking why, <laughs> crying out why, <sighs> it's gonna make me emotional. Why did I have to experience this? Why did they treat me this way? Why have I never had friends? Why, just why? It's heartbreaking. But it was all for a purpose, group three. And the universe is needing you to see why, to find that rainbow through all those storms, because that rainbow is, is your guiding light. You're meant to find that pot of gold at the end of the rainbow. You're meant to come out of that storm and find your pot of gold. All these things we're preparing you for your purpose, to be this beacon of light in some way in your life. And these past experiences taught you, I feel like, to not trust your instincts, to not trust, <clears throat> excuse me, that intuition that you naturally have. That is what I was saying by that crown chakra tingling. It's like you do on some level that things that were happening in your life, things that have happened to you, they were not right. That's not how people should be treated. That's not how people should be spoken to, whatever. But it's like you had to go along with it. You were taught not to trust yourself. It's like... I hate to say it, this is such a trigger warning group. But it's like, once again, a kid that grows up abused, 
right? They know deep down that it's not right. They know it's not right that they're being hurt this way, that they are being treated in this manner. But it's all that they know, so they just have to tolerate it. They could even ask for help, and then that help never comes. So they just have to continue to deal with it. At some stage, you were taught to block out your own intuitive nudges. You are, oh, you are so freaking powerful. More powerful than I think you even realize or even hope to be. You are one with source. Literally, you are an earth angel. You have all the clear abilities, clear cognizant, clear cognizance, <laughs> clear cognizance, clear audience, clairvoyance. Um, I can't even think of the rest of one, but you have them. And you're meant to tap into them. These past experiences happen. I hate to say it, but to tear you down in order for you to build yourself back up. To step into your authenticity. To really fully step into your own authority. To be able to speak your voice. To think for yourself. Right? To not just follow a crowd, but to really be able to look at things on a deeper level. And in order to step into this manifestation, you're going to have to release all this ish that you were taught in your past. All this programming that was poured into you from your past in some way. You, you are someone who's probably been looking for home. Oh, look, you have five, five, and a five there. We'll get into that in a minute looking for a place where you belong, maybe have never really felt like you had friends or like you even fit in in your own family, um, have just felt rejected, just not at home, not comfortable anywhere. And this does go back to that nervous system regulation that I was speaking about before. But it, it's also because the places where you've been looking, they are not where you belong. This is a message of rejection being God's protection. Like you were taught to not trust your natural God-given gifts and instincts. And because of that, it has been leading you to places that do not really fit you. But once you begin to really do this deep dive and discover more about yourself, unlock those gifts that have been locked up, you're going to come into finding where you belong. And you're going to come into knowing that wherever you are is where you belong because you are one with source. But you're going to find your soul tribe. You're meant to find your soul tribe. This could even be part of what your manifestation is about. You can manifest your every wish 100%. You can manifest your every wish after you release these things that you were taught in the past. Whether this is there's just some limiting things that you were taught. I feel like it really does have to do with your nervous system regulation. So you might be interested in looking into that and how trauma can affect the nervous system. You might even want to reach out to me as a certified life coach because that is what I specialize in. So I had to do it for myself. This could be the way that you view yourself, right? You could just not feel pretty, not feel attractive, not feel good enough because of things that from your past that have taught you to believe this, right? You could have just been taught on some level that you were just not good enough to achieve the things you wanted and that's not true. You can manifest everything you wish once you get rid of these blockages. I feel like it's time to crumble down like this castle, the war. Crumble down the walls that have been built around you, the false beliefs, the false narratives. It's time to heal yourself. It's time to really come back home to you is what I feel like this message is. You don't have to fight. 
You don't have to fight. It's not worth your energy even. And you're being called to know that out of all of this pain, heartache, heartbreak that you experienced, something very beautiful will grow from it. And that thing that is going to grow from it, like I said, is you being that beacon of light to others, is you healing yourself and in turn healing others because you will have gained that knowledge with this sword here. You will have gained all of that knowledge. Once again, back to the fives, there is so much change trying to come into your life. And once you really begin to embark on this quest of reclaiming your inner authority, change is going to be happening all around you. Sometimes it can look like a string of amazing things happening. Other times it can look like, once again, these walls crumbling around you, all the faulty foundations. It may look like your life is just going up in shambles, but it's not. That is the universe removing all of that ish so that it can bring in those solid foundations and new steady, be steady beginnings that you are asking for. So much powerful change and so many new beginnings are coming in your way and spirit is helping you to manifest it. Your tarot card is 10 of inspiration, 10 of wands. It's time to lay down those burdens. There were some burdens that were projected onto you that were placed onto you due to past trauma. Once again, PTSD, CPTSD, fight or flight, all of that stuff, right? It placed you in this energy of just like being fiery, always being ready for a fight. But that's not who you are at your core. You are a lover, not a fighter. You are the muse. The hanged muse is the bottom of the deck. You're being called to find a different way of looking at life, looking at what you've experienced, right? Finding that rainbow within that storm, looking at a new way of being really stepping into that version of yourself that you want to be to awaken i just split the deck awakening this is judgment you're being called to rise to the occasion to know that nothing will change unless you begin that process of change for yourself and once you do your manifestation will begin to take shape for you and come into your life Let's get a final card out for you. Oh, got two cards. This 10 is also telling us that this is the end of a phase, the end of a chapter. And you are about to begin a new phase, a new way of living, of looking at life. That is what all this change is going to bring in for you. You have Jasmine. Success will be found if you hold on to hope. Don't give up hope. Don't give up hope that your bright day will come. Don't give up hope that you will find where you belong, find your soul tribe, that you will be successful because it's in your destiny. You just have to release, release that ish from the past. Then you have Aster. The past is over. Let your true self step forward. Selfs is reading up perfectly. Yes, the past is over. Let your true self step forward. And then I'm going to roll some dice to get some timing. Once again, remember, time is not linear to spirit. The true timing of this will depend on when you decide to do that work and how quickly you work on yourself. Once again, if you would like some help in getting to the root cause of these issues to help you transcend those limitations, Find my website in the description box below. You have three and four. Anywhere from three weeks to four months is what this is looking like for you all. And I heard up to four years for others because you might fight doing this deep dive, but it is required. Group three, if this resonated with you, please like this video and subscribe to the channel. 
If you would like to help support the channel even more, you can find a donation link as well as an Amazon wish list listed in the description box below. Thank you for sharing your wonderful energy with me and I look forward to seeing you again very soon. Goodbye.